Go ahead and jump in. We have Jim, Jim Davis on Blue Red Eldrazi, currently 16th on our leaderboard, but he is also the Players' Champion. He won the Players' Championship last year yep. in Roanoke, so he does get all those benefits throughout this year. He's playing against Jacob Baugh, who is on White Black Control. He's currently 3-0 and and 14th on our leaderboard, so we had a couple buys coming into this tournament. And I believe that Jim is actually the, the captain of Team Metagame he, Gurus. So he is the captain of Team he's, Metagame um, Gurus. And I, he's been streaming a lot more. I know, I know Jim has been, uh, like, uh, he's had a great Magic career, but I think he's continuing to sort of ramp up his intensity that he brings to the game, um, you know, throughout the week. All right, well, we're going to have both players are just going to be playing lands at a very quick place to get into the mid game here. Uh, Jim does have a majoring network that he can use to start gaining some value here on his lands, ramping into those big spells. Uh, Jacob is the first to act here with a Kalidus Trader of Get on turn four. Now, there aren't a lot of really clean answers for that in Jim's deck, but he does have a bunch of counter spells. Yeah, ideally, he'd use the counter spells on something like Gideon um, or Secure the Wastes if he doesn't have a Kozilex return. So. You know, this probably isn't the most relevant threat in the matchup, but Jim certainly needs to deal with it some way or another. Yeah, eventually it will it will win the game if completely uncontested. Jim is just going to let it resolve, charge up his majoring network. Uh, he's going to play a copy of Shrine of the Forsaken Gods and then pass the turn back. It looks like he's trying to ramp into something really big. Mm -hmm. And this is such a stark contrast from the last match we watched. <laughs> you know, the white weenie versus the three color seasons past where, you know, good old Jeff Hoogland, you know, God bless his soul, but, you know, also, you know, rest in peace because <laughs> he got destroyed. <laughs> he did. He, he was able to, to take a game there. Yeah. Jim is just going to let this Kalidus crash in, uh, fall down to 17. Jacob Baugh is going to go up to 23. Yeah. He's going to charge up that Mage Ring Network one more time. And the and, and the main main reason that I brought up Jeff Hoogland was just that this is the sort of matchup that he wanted to play. Like, you know, when he brought his deck to the tournament, this is these sort of matchups were what he was signing up for, where things are at a nice slow pace. Yeah. And uh, you know this is what a lot of standard is. Jim has a copy of Spawning Bed and is just gonna pass the turn. Jacob's gonna add another Land tapped on the battlefield. It's his third copy of Shambling Man. Going to crash in with that Kalidus Trader of Get. Taking Jim down to 14. Jacob's going to go up to 26. It looks like he's just passing the turn. And even though nothing's really happened, this game state is kind of symptomatic of how I think these decks line up against each other. You know, they're both kind of doing a little bit of nothing developing their mana, but Jim is a little better at developing his mana. Jacob's going to be a little faster with his threats. And Jim is going to have to two-for-one himself to answer them. <laughs> yeah, Jim just used a Kozilek's return plus a Spatial Contortion on Jacob's end step. That's going to take care of the Kalidus. But now Jim is in a pretty good spot here that if he can get a couple more land drops, he's going to have a lot of mana to start slamming those Ulamogs, and it looks like he has one in his hand. Well, it's nice that Jim was able to answer Jacob's threat, but the the fact that he had a two for one himself can't, you know, really be understated. That that is a not a particularly good recipe. But Jim is going to have a chance here to hopefully deploy some sort of powerful threat to the board, and he does want to answer that Cletus before he does, because you know if Cletus is on the board when Jim loses a creature, that means that Jacob's going to be able to get a uh, a zombie token. All right, well, we've got a big turn here for Jim. He's going to use all the counters on his Majoring Network to play a Hedron Archive, and then uses Hedron Archive along with his three lands, two of which are blue, to play a copy of Jace. Uh, and then he's going to plus one the Jace, which is scry one, draw a card. So Jace Unraveler of Secrets is what we've got on the battlefield now. However, might not be long for this world since we have an end step secure the waste from Jacob. It looks yeah. like it's going to give him four tokens. And if he can untap into a Gideon here, this might be KO for that Jace and a bunch of damage on Jim. Well, even just the shambling vents are going to be able to help take care of that Jace. So Jim really wanted to have, uh, I mean, he had a good turn because he got to develop his mana even farther and play a repeatable source of card advantage. But if this Jace just cycles and absorbs some damage, uh, you know, that's certainly not what Jim was hoping um, would happen when he put, you know, this Jace in his deck. Yeah. Now, we, get, we saw that Jim had a copy of Ulamog in his hand, mm -hmm. and he's one land away from being able to play it. He's currently at eight mana. 
but two of those lands are Shrine of the Forsaken God, and he has six lands. So if he hits his seventh land, those shrines are going to be turned on, and it's going to be Ulamog time. Yeah. So this is pretty interesting. Uh, okay, this makes sense. So it like, looks like Jacob is just going to crash Jim for four, or crash Jace for four with the, or crash Jim for four with the soldiers, and then use Soren to take care of the Jace with the minus four. Yeah, I think Jim actually got crashed into for three, and one token went at the Jace because the Jace was at six. So uh, the Jace knocked down to five so that Soren could finish it off without Soren dying. And still live. Unfortunately, this plays into a potential Ulamog pretty well. Let's see if Jim has it. He's counting up his mana. There's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boom. All right. We've got a cash trigger. Oh, he's going to be able to replay this Kozilek's return. Yeah, and this is a huge play. If Jacob doesn't have, uh, like, an anguish on making, right now the game's basically over. Like, mill, mill your opponent for, for, 20. for 20 cards, whack them for 10. I mean, Jacob is at 11, but, um, you know, one hit is bad. Two hits is most certainly game ending. Yeah, a million 20 cards. Oh, there's the Anguish on making. Jeez. Jacob's going to lose three in the process, but he's going to get rid of that Ulamog. So basically, Jim has played uh, four cards, and Jacob has played four. So I think despite each one having like two for ones or one for twos on either side of the board, they're basically at parity in terms of literal card advantage. Um, I might be miscounting, but I believe that's true. Uh, Jacob has some creature lands on his side. Jim does have a spawning bed, which he can turn into three one ones. He also has a Hedron Archive that he can cash in for two cards. And it looks like he has a copy of Chandra yeah, Flamecaller really in his hand. The thing that's tricky about this, though, is the Chandra can come into play and pressure Jacob. But the fact that Jacob has two creature lands means that um, you know, Chandra might have a hard time sticking. And Jacob is at such a high life total from that um, Kalidus getting in those hits that, you know, he J Jacob doesn't really care if he takes some damage. All right, it looks like we're just going to get a Drowner of Hope. These, these Scions from this can go a long way towards playing some defense for that Chandra. So I think that what we might see here is um, that Hedron Archive getting cracked on Jacob's end step to draw a couple of cards and then just untapping into a Chandra to get in, to get in for some damage and leave those Scions back to protect yeah. the Chandra. And so far this draw from Jim has been, seems like it's been um, pretty good. Like the combination of uh, creatures with some sort of come into play effect um, and Planeswalkers is uh, definitely the sort of thing that you want to do against a control deck. So I feel like Jim is getting one of his better draws. Maybe he could have been a little more exclo explosive, um, but Jacob so far has been able to answer it. So Jacob used a Languish to take care of those Scions and drop that Drowner of Hope down to a 1-1. Now he's going to take a point of damage down to 28 and use Grasp of Darkness to take care of that Drowner. However, Jim was able to you sacrifice those two Scions for mana and draw two cards to the Hedron Archive before that Languish resolved. Let's see if Jim has one of these copies of Void Shatter or Clash of Wills to save it. Or if he's just going to, yeah, he's just going to let the Drowner die. He's going to charge up his Mage Ring network. One now thing, we might see a Chandra this turn. One thing that's interesting is I think for the most part, neither of these players are really equipped particularly well to answer the other's threats. We've seen if like, you know, two for ones on either side of the board because, or I should say one for twos on either side of the board because you know, the threats are just hard to deal with and the removal doesn't line up particularly well. Well, Jim is just going to use two Shrine of the Forsaken God to play out another Hedron Archive. Pass the turn back to Jacob. He's not really wanting to commit that Chandra to the board yet. Yeah, I think ideally Jim would like to snipe a Planeswalker with it or get some sort of value out of it other than just damage. Um, because if Jim just deals some damage with it and then loses it to the creature lands, or a Secure the Waste, it, it's not really um, doing its job or particularly good. Jacob's just going to pass the turn. Jim's going to charge up that Majoring Network. Th that card seems so insane in this deck. Yeah, one, one card that I would love to see this deck play is uh, Clash of the Titans, or Fall of the Titans. Yeah, the Fireball. Yeah, the Fireball. That you can fork. Yep. 
Yeah, looks like we've just got another copy of Drowner of Hope is going to come down. Unfortunately, it doesn't have that fireball, but that would be sweet. Doesn't have a lot of cheap cards to, to yeah. go with it. He does have Epiphany at the Drown Yard, so he could just Epiphany for a, a million. Lot. <laughs> yeah. Instead of fireball for damage, it's fireball for, for card cards. Draw. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jacob is just going to lose the life, go to 27, make a 1-1 human cleric. Let's see what Jacob has now on his turn. Drowner of Hope is a very good card. Yeah, it doesn't die to Ultimate Price, doesn't die to Grasp and Darkness, doesn't die to, um, you know, a lot of the removal in the format. The 5-5 five, five Devoid Body is quite good. Well, here is a Transgress the Mind from Jacob. Uh, looks like Jim has a copy of Chandra in his hand, but also a... Clash of Wills, so he might just Clash of Wills. So it looks... Oh, he's got the Hedron Archive. Okay, I was yes. going to say, it looks like Jim just clashed for four, but he's got that Hedron Archive hiding over there, so that yeah. was a Clash for five. Yeah, so he's got a Clash for five. And that was a pretty important play. If Jacob had stripped away that Chandra, being able to one-for-one, one, uh, you know, a card like Chandra is pretty good yeah. and, and quite hard to do. Well, Jacob's just going to read the bones, bottom two cards, draw two cards, play another land and pass. This would be a perfect time to slam that Chandra and get in for some damage. Those Scions will go a long way towards protecting them from the, yeah. uh, from the creature lands or anything that Jacob might be able to cobble together. But Jacob's also taken a handful of damage now from his cards, read the bone, read the bones, Westvale Abbey, that anguish on making, to where starting to pressure his life total, even though he's at 24 is a real thing because he has this 5-5 five five and a Chandra can push that alongside. Yeah, he's also got the uh, creature land, ran the Wandering Fumarole, so Jim could, uh, if he has enough mana, he could potentially hit for like 17 damage and come close to killing Jacob out of nowhere. I also like that Spawning Bed can make three Eldrazi Scions that you can then use with uh, yeah, the Drowner. Drowner to tap things down. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. The fact that Jacob didn't have anything more impactful to do on his turn is a little bit of a problem because he's going to be in a situation where he had such a secure position in this game. But because, uh, you know, Jim has had a couple good plays in a row and, and Jacob didn't really do anything on the board, Jacob finds himself in a situation where he's kind of behind. Jim is going to go ahead and deploy that Chandra. He's going to plus one to make two 3-1 elementals that have haste and will die at the beginning of the end step. It looks like he's just going to crash in with his entire team. Yep, no, no creature land in for the attack, but still uh, quite a bit of damage. Jacob's going to block one of the 1-1 one -one scions with a Westfell Abbey token. He's going to take 6, 11, 12 damage down to 12. Jim's going to lose his elementals at the end of turn and pass back to Jacob. Jacob did get to read the bones last turn and gets to untap with a bunch of mana here. So let's see what potential plays he has. Yeah, a Soren to kill the Chantra would be a nice play here. Um, not sure if he has access to that, but we'll see what he's got. Well, here we're going to have... That's pretty good. Ruinous Path with Awakening. Going to make his Shambling Vent into a 4-4. And then he can activate it and it becomes a 6-7. Jim's deciding what he wants to do here, if he wants to tap that down or not. Does he have enough mana to sacrifice for the spawning bed? Uh, looks like he does have five mana, so he can sacrifice for the spawning bed. So I believe that he can sacrifice the spawning bed. It makes three Eldrazi. Yeah, is, so is Jacob is just dead here? Yeah, I think this is just an onboard kill. Spawning bed can make three. That brings him up to nine power. Wandering Fumarole is four more, so that's 13 total power. And he just sacrifices one of them to tap the... Yep. So Jacob probably didn't have any other good plays and was just hoping that Jim maybe wouldn't see that line of play, but Jim, the Stone yeah. Cold Master, the Ruthless Long Island Killer, he, uh, you know, <laughs> he's not going to miss anything like that. Well, Jim Davis is going to take this uh, first game on Blue Red Eldrazi over Jacob Baugh on White Black Control. Let's take a look at the player's sideboards here while they're sideboarding to see if we can figure out what they're going to do. Jim has one Kozilex return, two Fiery Impulse, two Roast, two Negate, a Dispel, three copies of Reality Smasher, two Prophet of Distortion. 
<laughs> a rending volley and a Tears of Valor cut. What do you think Jim's going to do here? So uh, I just want to clarify. Prophet of Distortion, is that the one mana, one, two, that you can pay four mana to like draw a card? Yes, sir. OK, so that's coming in. Um, <laughs> I like that. Uh, so profit, I, I would bring in Prophet of Distortion just for card advantage, Reality Smasher, just as a bonkers threat that's hard to deal with. And uh, he probably wants to bring in the roasts for things like Kalidus. Um, and then, you know, the negates and dispels, you can make an argument for them too. Uh, he already has three Kozilex return in his deck, so I don't think he's going to want to bring in a fourth one. Mm -hmm. But maybe for the most part, the, you know, his his removal doesn't really line up that well. So he like, really wants to take out the Spatial Contortions and the Fire Impulse. Um, I'm not sure what else he would want to take out. Seems like a lot of his cards are kind of good, but maybe upgrading a Clash of Wills into like a Negate um, is something that he wants to do. I can see that. Yep. Now on Jacob's side, we have an Obnixless Reignited, a Planar Outburst, one Declaration in Stone, two Transgress the Mine, three Reality Smasher, two Deadweight, three Duress, and two Thought Knots here. What do we think he's going to bring in? So I like bringing in the Obnixless just because Jim has a lot of weird creatures that are hard to kill, so Obnixless is good because it has the card text kill target anything. Um, I think that Jacob might also want to bring in Planar Outburst for a similar reason. Uh, Declaration in Stone, again, I don't like the card a whole lot, but you do want Exile effects for Ulamog, so I think he'll bring that in. Uh, Transgress the Mind, you can, he'll probably bring that in too. And I think that both Reality Smasher and Thought Knots here will also be coming in uh, because they're, they're just good threats. Uh, I don't think that he'll bring in the Duress because um, I Basically, he's bringing in the rest of his sideboard, but he may just have so many cards to take out that he has room to bring in the Duresses also. I guess, yeah, I think Duress has some potential here, especially when you're trying to, like, push cards through counter magic. Right, exactly. Uh, now, thank you very much to all of you viewers out there that are watching with us. I do want to give you a little more information about the benefits of subscribing to our Twitch channel. Oh, so baby. SCG Live, you can have exclusive subscribers-only chat. So if you want to let everybody know what you think while you're watching, uh, you get that benefit. You also get to decide on the corner finals match that we show. Dude, get, they have so much power. I know, right? My you God. also get custom emoticons and badges. There's the Cedric and Patrick emoticons. We need to get CVM and Andrew Boswell mm. emoticons at some point. And it is only $4.99 a month. Uh, to subscribe, so thank you very much. Twitch.tv slash SCG Live to get some more information. I think, and that the SCG Live badge that you get next to your name is pretty sweet. It's the play oh, yeah. button. Mm -hmm. Who, whoever designed that, should get, <laughs> they should probably get a raise. Oh yeah, give that person a raise. Uh, so while our players are finishing up shuffling here, let's learn a little bit more about Jim Davis. Mm -hmm. So he is the captain of Team Metagame Gurus. He's 31 from Long Island, New York. He has 10 open top eights with two wins, two invitational top eights. He is, in addition to playing magic and streaming, he's a local radio DJ hosting a weekly show every Monday. I think he also has a band. He does have a band. Yeah. He loves hockey. He was the captain of the Stony Brook, Stony Brook University roller hockey team, and he won the 2015 SCG Players Championship. So he was able to take that down. He played... Uh, Green, Red, Eldrazi, and Standard. Mm -hmm. Green, Red, Tron, and Modern. Mm -hmm. And just crushed everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so Jim Davis is currently up a game with his Blue, Red, Eldrazi deck. He is he is no stranger to the ways of the Ulamog. Yeah. And he's putting it to good use here. That Ulamog in game one was pretty backbreaking. It just yeah. took took care of all of the threats that Jacob had. You know, replayed the Kozlux return from the graveyard. Killed the Sorin. Got to take care of one of the Shambling vents. Let's see if Jim can relive those Ulamog awesomeness. So Jacob's going to start off with just a couple of tap lands. Jim has a basic island and a majoring network and going to pass back. This is a really good start. He can use something like Clash of Wills. He can also just charge that majoring network if Jacob doesn't have anything going on. You know, Jim is just all about playing a waiting game here. Yeah. One of the things that I love about playing Magic is running into people like Jim. Jim, you know, you, you may see him or meet him and he just seems like an ordinary guy, but he's just good at getting good at things, you know? <laughs> it's like he's got the band, he's been the captain of, of uh, the hockey team. He's like really good at Magic. He's on, you know, one of the like premier teams based out of New York. And uh, when you get to play Magic, you just meet all these people who have, you know, they're just these interesting people 
with, who are just good at like random things, and it's always um, it's always fun to interact with them. I know, like I I, I got to meet this guy who's really good at pottery, just like oh, throwing yeah, no pots. <laughs> Works with I wonder clay. Who you're talking about? He, I, he's a, even had a sweet tutorial video that I got to watch. Oh yeah. He just travel playing magic, and you meet all these awesome people. Yeah, definitely one of the. I can't remember his name though. Yeah. Definitely one of the great things about Magic, though, is you just get to meet the coolest people. Well, so far in this game, Jacob is just playing a waiting game. Jim is very happy to do that. He has a couple of majoring networks that he's just taking some advantage of. Yeah, both of these players, their proactive plays are relatively big. So on the opening turns, they're just going to be, you know, playing their mana. It looks like Jacob wants to be first to act, and Jim just says, nuh uh Nope. Get that secure the waste out of here. I got my dispel. Yeah, so Jim is going to cash in some of the mana on those uh, majoring networks. He's going to play his Hedron Archive. Ooh, this is good. Yeah, Abnicholas is going to be real good. It's going to draw some cards. So I wonder if Jacob specifically sequenced this so that he would clear the way for Obnixilis. Like, a Secure the Waste for three isn't really that threatening. Um, if it resolves, it, it would be, you know, fine. It wouldn't be really great, though. Uh, but the fact that it baited out the Dispel and cleared the way for this Obnixilis is a pretty big deal because Obnixilis is pretty hard for Jim to do with. I mean, uh, he could play Chandra. Or this. Or Reality Smasher. <laughs> but even still, uh, it's going to live, and it's going to draw more cards, and I'm sure Jacob is going to have some sort of answer for this Reality Smasher. Yeah, so Smasher is actually going to be really good here. It doesn't die to Ultimate Price. It doesn't die to um, Grasp of Darkness. You know, cards like Ruinous Path, Anguish on Making can take care of it. Um, but if Jacob doesn't have anything like that, he's going to be in a tough spot. He's going to draw yeah. a card off of Obnixilis, falling down to 18. He's going to transgress Gem. Looks like there's an Epiphany at the Drown Yard, mm -hmm. two copies of Void Shatter, an Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, and a copy of Hedron Archive. You know, we haven't seen this in Standard very much, but if you get a Reality Smasher on the board and you have Counter Magic to protect it, it is just so brutal to deal with because that Reality Smasher is going to trigger and make your opponent discard a card whether the removal spell gets countered or not. Yeah. So, I mean, there's nothing worse than discarding a card to try to kill your opponent's Reality Smasher, having them counter it and say, all right, now I've got to, like, find another card to discard and, you know. Um, so, thankfully, Jacob probably, uh, you know, transgressed just exactly to see what's going on. And now he knows it's safe to, you know, use the Ruinous Path and it'll be okay for a while. Ruinous Path took care of that. He did discard his own Reality Smasher to the discard trigger. It's interesting to note here that Jim has two copies of Void Shatter in his hand. Mm -hmm. Whereas in, like, the initial version of this deck that Ollie was playing had um, Spell Shrivel. Yeah. Jim, until now, didn't have two blue mana sources and even still doesn't have two mana, two blue mana sources that he can use this turn. Uh, yeah, that is true. Um, seems like... A little greedier to play the Void Shatters, but Jim's just decided it's the it's the move to make. So it'll be interesting to see how it works out for him. So far, it doesn't seem quite as good, but you know we still have more of the match to play. He's got a copy of Highland Lake. Just going to pass the turn back to Jacob. Jacob's going to draw a card with Obnixilis, going to 17. He's going to cast Read the Bones, falling to 15. But he's going to get to Scry 2. Let's see where he puts them. And Jacob is you know, drawing a lot of cards, but at some point Jim is going to cash in that Epiphany at the Drown Yard and, and be right back in it in terms of card advantage. All right, so Jacob's going, going to top bottom with his Scry. Here's another Transgress. That's going to take care of the Ulamog. Yep. We're probably going to see an end step Epiphany at the Drown Yard. And Jim well. couldn't have countered that even if he wanted to, so... Um, Maybe paying the price for having the Void Shatter rather than Spell Shrivel, as you were saying, but I don't know. All right, so he's going to Epiphany at the Drown Yard here. It's going to be for five, six. Oh, yeah, it's, it's five plus one, so for six cards. Mm -hmm. uh, he separates them into two piles, and then his opponent gets to choose where the piles go. These sort of effects are always fun because you... You know, it's it's always like a sub game to try to trick your opponent into giving you what you need. Usually, yeah. when you do this, your opponent doesn't have complete information about your hand. But unfortunately, um, Jacob knows what's in Jim's hand, and so Jacob is going to be able to make a, a pretty educated decision about what to give Jim. So you really just need to tailor it so that it's just you know, a damned piles. if you do, damned if you don't sort of thing. Right. 
Looks like there's an Ulamog, a Chandra, a couple lands. Let's see how Jim splits these piles, and then we'll get to see where Jacob puts them. At the very least, he has the chance just to draw three cards. Yeah. Another thing to note is uh, Jim only has one red source of mana, so he's actually really low on colored mana. And Okay, so he's got the Shivan Reef to go with his Chandra. Yes, yeah, so looks like there's a Shivan Reef and a Chandra in one pile. And then we have Roast, Island, Shrine of the Forsaken Gods, Ulamog in the other pile. So that Shrine's not quite turned on yet, but that Ulamog will be able to be played in two turns if he gets that pile. Yeah, and he already has a Shrine in play, and he's got the Hedron Archive, so um, Ulamog certainly prone to arrive ahead of schedule. And because this is the end of Jacob's turn, Jacob knows that if he gives Jim the Chandra, it's going to be able to kill the Obnixilis. All right, so it looks like he's just going to give him the Chandra. Yep. Seems like Jacob is content to, well, I shouldn't say content, but knows that the best option is just to essentially sacrifice his Obnixilis, and he can deal with the Chandra a lot more easily than he can deal with an Ulamog. Oh, no. Well, it looks like Jim picked up another copy of Reality Smasher here, so he can use that to kill the, uh, the Obnixilis. And then keep the counter magic. And keep the counter, the counter yeah. magic available. Yeah, that is That gross. is going to be brutal. All right, so Reality Smasher is going to smash the realities of Obnixilis, and mm -hmm. it's going to die. Pass the turn to Jacob. But now Jim has two hard counters in his hand to go along with the already Punisher effect on Reality Smasher of making Jacob have to discard a card if he wants to target it. Oh, this situation is so gross for Jacob. Like, the Reality Smasher plus counter magic is... So gross. Right, so I mean, he's going to have to, like, f you know, four for two this thing at best. Well, not only that, but there aren't that many cards that he has in his deck that can actually kill it. Yeah, that too. Like, he already used... Ooh, he's got a Duress. He already used a Ruinous Path. I mean, Jim's got to just let this resolve. It's like, fine, take one of my Void Chatters. I'll still have mana for the other. And I still have a Chandra in the wings if I yeah. draw another red source. Yep. If I was Jim, I, I would just hold that two blue mana open forever, though. Yeah. Just I'd make make Jacob discard the maximum number of cards. All right, Duress is going to reveal two Void Shatter and Chandra. Jacob's going to take the Chandra and leave him with the Void Shatters. What Jacob can do is, uh, like, un unless he has two removal spells to deal with the uh, Reality Smasher now, what Jacob's going to want to do is end of turn, or end of Jim's turn, uh, cast a removal spell, untap, cast a removal spell. All right, well, Jacob's going to play a Gideon. Jim's going to use the Void Shatter and exile the Gideon. Let's see what he picked up for this turn. Is he going to cash in on a Hedron Archive? Oh, he drew a Wandering Fumoral. Still a fine draw. I mean, as long as he's got two blue... Is he topping one of his blue? Oh, no, he's got the uh, the other dual in there. Yeah, so he has three blue sources currently. Yeah. Two red sources. All right, he's going to cash in and archive, draw a couple of cards. If he could draw another counter spell, oh, no, just more land. It's like he drew another archive and another land. Well, he's got mana for days. He's going to attack with his Reality Smasher. This is going to bring Jacob down to 10. This is where I want like some sort of button that does like sound effects, and I can just like slam a button and be like Hulk Smash or whatever, <laughs> you know. And then and then we'll have another sound for like when uh, it, like he has to discard something from the Reality Smasher trigger. That'd be really fun. I'm sure I'm sure we'll get to work on that soon. All right. So it looks like he's just going to play a shrine, and then use it to play another Hedron Archive. He has it seven mana, seven lands. So the shrines are turned on. Oh, no, and Jake, Jacob just has Jeez. a land and pass. Hopefully he has, like, a Secure the Waste or something that he's going to cast. I do believe he has Secure in hand. But even still, if he's just, like, yeah, plays it. Go, go to five or whatever. All right, Jim is going to cash that in and draw two cards. Oh, he picked up another Void Shatter. Dude, that's got to be game. I 
such a bad spot for Jacob. Nice. Jacob can wiggle his way out of this. It'd be real impressive. So now, Jim hasn't played his land yet, so he's waiting until after combat to be able to play his island mm -hmm. to hold up for the other Void Shatter. Which Jacob doesn't know about. <coughs> yes, which Jacob does not know about. So, so here he real. thinks that the coast is clear to try and kill this. He hopes the coast is smasher. clear. And he's got to do it now. He's got to like play around Clash of Wills or top deck. Like if he has a removal spell, now is the time. Well, as much as I was harping on these Void Shatters needing blue blue, they have been very good in this game in conjunction yeah. in conjunction with that Reality Smasher. Oh, I think he has a Planar Outburst. So this would be a good answer, but. See here, Jacob is going to play that outburst. Jim's just going to use another Void Shatter. And Jacob's going to scoop him up. Yep, shows his last card just to kind of let Jim know, yeah, there's nothing else I could have done. But uh, Jim Jim just had him in such a tough spot. That was, uh, that was just gross. And that's not something that we actually see very often in Standard. I mean, other than this deck, I can't think of any other deck that pairs counter spells with Reality Smasher. I guess sometimes the four color um, company decks that board into Reality Smasher also have a small number of negates. Mm -hmm. 